So there are two basic operations we perform in a circular cube, which is add from the rear, delete from the front. So let's first take a look at how we are going to add from the rear. By now you probably know that we are going to have an input variable. And this is going to be of no return type. The first operation when we add into a queue that we must check is whether the queue is full. In a circular queue, there can be two instances in which a queue is full. So I'm going to give a small example here. This is not a part of the program. So the first instance when the queue is full So this is the first instance when a queue is full, when the front is at zero and the rear is at the end of the array. What is the condition we can draw from this is if rear minus front is equal to the length of the array minus one. So the length of the array is three over here. Rear minus front is equal to two minus zero, which is equal to two, which is equal to the length minus one or 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. Now, the second example of when the queue could become full would be when my front is, say, at the end or anywhere in between, and my rear has wrapped around and has input two elements. So in this case, value wise, the rear is less than the front. So this is an also a case where the queue is full. So what is the condition we can draw from this? When front minus rear is equal to one, then we say that the queue is full. So I'm going to say this again. There are two conditions in which a circular queue becomes full. When rear minus front is equal to length minus 1 or when front minus rear is equal to 1. So with these two conditions in mind, let's write our program. So if rear minus front is equal to array.length, this is equal to equal to array.length minus 1 or front minus rear is equal to 1 then the queue becomes full and we will return from the function all right now we have checked whether the queue is full and now when we come to this line of code we are sure that the queue is not full and there is scope to add an element to the rear. The next thing we must check is whether we are adding the first element to the queue. So I'm going to check if the queue is empty. So if front is equal to minus one, then we say that the queue is empty. In this case, we are adding the first element to the queue. So I'm going to make front zero I'm going to make rear 0 and I'm going to add into the 0th position the element which we have input. My work is done for the first element so I'm going to return from the function. Now when we come to this line of code we are only going to deal with all the normal cases of adding to the rear. So as we have said previously First, we are going to change the rear to rear plus plus mod array dot length. So this is equal to rear plus plus only when rear plus plus becomes four or 
rather only when rear plus plus becomes the same as the length then the mod function comes into play and it gets reset to zero so now we have to insert the element into that index of the array now we have inserted the element into the rear of the array and our work for this function is done so we can close this function now we have seen how to add an element to the rear of the array now let's look at how to delete an element from the front of the array so as you know by now we are going to return an integer and I will have no input variables the first thing we must check when we delete an element from a queue is whether the queue is empty. So when front is equal to minus one, the queue is empty. There is no scope for deleting an element from the queue so we don't want to continue with our program and we return the next thing we must check is whether we are deleting the last element of the queue so to check that we must check if if rear is equal to front then we say that this is the last element there's a small change this when we return we cannot give a blank return statement because we have given the return type as int so I'm going to return minus one as a dummy integer coming back to the program when rear is equal to front we say that this is the last element of the queue so I'm going to store the element in a temporary variable say temp Then I'm going to set front and rear back to their original values and I'm going to return the value of the last element which is stored in the temporary variable. Now I have dealt with the case where I am deleting the last element. Now when we come to this line of code we are dealing with all the normal cases of deleting from the front. So as we have said earlier, I'm going to update my front to front plus plus mod the length of the array. Before I do this, I need to store the element which I am deleting in a temporary variable. So I have stored the element I want to return in a temporary variable temp. I have updated my front and now I will return that variable. This, with this I come to the end of my delete front operation. These are the two major operations or functions you will have to write when writing a circular queue.